Join us for the next edition if it's about money. My guest will be Emily Wozniak, and she's from Sound Exchange. Hello and welcome to another edition of It's About Money. I'm Nanette Nalkan and thank you for joining us. I'm excited about our program and my guest is Emily Wozniak. She started Sound Exchange. You're probably wondering, what is Sound Exchange? So, Emily, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So, tell us about what is Sound Exchange and that's a capital E X, capital C, right. H A N G. So, tell right. us about that. Yeah, Sound Exchange is a student-run ensemble based at the Eastman School of Music, and our goal is to find different ways to transform the traditional classical music concert experience. So we play at a variety of venues, we pilot lots of different collaborations, and our goal really centers around finding ways to engage new audiences for classical music. That's great, because I know around the country, around the world, the audience participation has been declining, and right. so that's an innovative way to attract the new audience. Definitely. That's great. Now, how did the idea come about? Yeah, well, I play the French horn, and I've played the French horn ever since I was 11 years old, and it has always been my dream to play in a major symphony orchestra. And about a couple of years ago, I was very, very focused on winning an audition, playing in an orchestra, and I, I finally one day opened up the newspaper and looked online and started to actually be aware of the struggles orchestras were having in our country. And I thought, wow, this is, this is kind of crazy because musicians are so passionate about the work we do. We love the music we play, but there's somehow a disconnect between how much we love the music we play and its reception in society. And I thought, when I go to grad school, I want to start a group or an initiative to kind of tackle this problem. And I think young musicians are curious, they want to try new things, and that's maybe what classical, mu classical music needs is a group of people who are willing to try new things and bring in new audiences. That's great. That, that's yeah. a great way to just like a light bulb. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm intrigued about the way sound exchange with the capital C. Tell me about that. How, what, what, what does that mean? Yeah, well, when we first started the group, um, it was my first year of grad school, and we were trying to come up with a name for our group. Um, and we didn't want to call it an orchestra or an ensemble um, because all of those words kind of come with certain connotations. So we thought we can use the word sound instead of music, and we want there to be an exchange between the performers and the listeners instead of the performers just presenting this product. We actually believe that we have to put the audience at the center of our mission. And so if we're giving something to them, they're definitely giving something to us too. So the C, we decided to capitalize because I think we all believe that there's room for positive change in the field of classical music. So along with it being an exchange, we're looking to make some real changes in the profession. Oh, brilliant, that's really cool. Yeah. So um, when I go to the um, Eastman School of Music site, gig site, mm -hmm. I see some information about Sound Exchange. Right. Tell us about how uh, that connection, of course you're at the Eastman School of Music, but tell me about the connection and how can the community say, yeah, I want classical music, you know, I want that sound to be a part of my event. Sure, sure. So I think traditionally with classical music groups, you might go to the RPO or different orchestra concerts and that's really the main time you have access to that type of music or those musicians. And so with Sound Exchange, we wanted to kind of pilot our own concerts and projects, but also be very available to the community and find a way to really embed music into the community. So audiences can come to our concerts, but also our flexible roster of musicians can break off and actually go into people's homes or go into hospitals, go into art galleries. And the idea is that we hope to kind of broaden the access to classical music. So people can contact us directly and we can build customized concerts for whatever kind of venue or experience they're looking for. Yeah, I think it's wonderful. You know, I know you, we connected because I was looking for some musicians. Well, actually, no, we connected because I was trying to raise some uh, money and a friend emailed me and says, well, do you know about Sound Exchange? Yeah. So, and actually, let's, let's talk about that. Sure. Because the show is about money and sure. I, that's a way that you guys, what was the reason for, the, what was the primary impetus for being part of that crowd crowdfunding? Sure. So. From day one, I felt like um, there's really not a shortage of artistic ideas 
in the world of music, there's always a shortage of money, though. And so if we're going to launch this project called Sound Exchange, money has to be a part of it. We can't just say, oh, we're going to implement all these creative ideas. We have to find a way to fund them, and we have to find a way to pay the musicians. Because as musicians at Eastman, we're all looking to make professional careers in music. So to kind of not address the money issue is, is not reality. Mm -hmm. um, so we, for the first two years, explored all different ways of bringing in revenue. Um, and we were starting to build a group from scratch. So that was a challenge. So we entered competitions. We launched a Kickstarter campaign. And we ended up bringing in a pool of money that really has been able to fund our projects. And we always are able to pay musicians now. Um, and Kickstarter is kind of the hot crowdfunding platform right now, so we, we went to that immediately. Well, I thought it's, it's really cool because, you know, friends said, oh, and you know, I've never thought of supporting a musical group like that, but I just love the idea that yeah. you said earlier. It's about the change, bringing the sound or the music to the public and getting right. them engaged. I thought it's brilliant. So you met it's, your goal, of course. Yeah, we did. I, I have to say it was very stressful <laughs> because... Um, at least I'm, I'm pretty new to Rochester. At that point, I had only been here for a year. So we were really, we're still trying to build a community around Sound Exchange and to go out and ask for money and try to bring in um, money to, to fund your goal was, was difficult. It was very stressful, but it was, it was really wonderful to see the support behind a new idea. Yeah, that's great. So how do you keep, um, how do you keep building resources along the way? Because mm -hmm. you're going to need funding to make sure. I mean, I imagine that there is going to be, you know, people have gigs, they pay, for, they pay the musicians, but mm -hmm. then there are times that you bring the musicians to uh, a location that they might need to get paid, is that? Yeah, exactly. Um, so sometimes we're hired for gigs, mm -hmm. and sometimes we raise the money to put concerts on. And then we bring in revenue from ticket sales. But with all most performing arts organizations, ticket sales, I'm sure as you know, are just a very small portion right. um, of your revenue. So we, we apply for grants. Um, last spring, we got a grant from the Rochester Area Community Foundation We've won the New York, or placed second at the New York State Business Plan Competition twice, which was $10,000. Um, and we won Eastman's New Venture Challenge, which also had a monetary prize. Um, but I think for any nonprofit, the challenge is building a donor base. And yes. so to have someone want to donate to your group, they have to believe in what you're doing. And so we're continually trying to build our projects and our reputation in the community. Um, and we just had a wonderful time recently at Fringe Festival mm -hmm. um, and piloted a really cool project with a local dance group um, and a multimedia artist. So I think you know, it comes down to building that donor platform, applying for grants, um, and kind of trying to bring in funding in a variety of ways. Yeah, sure, and it's, it actually encourages creativity in a different way. Right. Because you know, comparing uh, the music with the dance, and in the dance company, from what I understand, is, is Geomatics, is that the word? Uh, it's Biodance. Biodance, I'm yeah. sorry, Biodance, okay. And it's, so it's a very um, contemporary. Yes. Yeah, and so it's nice to pair that up with classical music. Yeah, so that's, definitely. That's fantastic. So um, what what is, uh, do you have a budget? I mean, you've got to have some formal, what, what is the budget of mm -hmm. uh, Sound Exchange? Uh, we've raised total a little over $20,000. Nice, very nice. Yeah. That's fantastic, mm -hmm. that's great. And um, do you have a series of concerts that you plan in advance, or is it something that you know uh, comes up? Uh, you, you plan as needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a mix. We our model is that uh, I guess you could say I'm the founder and executive director, but because we're trying to do such a wide variety of things, we have a team of artistic directors. So one person kind of manages and implements our educational projects, and then we have three other individuals from Eastman who kind of have the freedom to dream up ideas for different concerts. And each of those directors kind of has a budget to launch a new project each year. But then, you know, aside from those projects, we get hired for different gigs. So the goal is that each year we're presenting something new and kind of building, um, I guess, a library of shows we do. And hopefully people in the community can come and watch those and enjoy them and maybe they want to experience more sound exchange and hire us for a gig or something like that. Yeah, and, and you guys are tremendous. I think it's wonderful. Thanks. So how many students, I mean, are all the members students then, or can they be other professionals? Um, they, they could be other professionals. Since we're at Eastman, it's been mostly Eastman musicians nice. right now. And, and how many uh, students have participated? 
anywhere from the first two years we did only orchestra concerts pretty much and that went up to 50 mm -hmm. and so I think the range is 2 to 50. I, I, I think if you treat an orchestra like it's a really flexible body of musicians instead of this huge massive group that can only perform in Kodak Hall a That's certain a, way, right. you treat it as a flexible group, the options totally open up. Sure. Oh, that, that's a great way to look at it. You're right. Yeah. It doesn't have to be this particular configuration of 50. Right. It can be a subset of that depending on, yeah, because sometimes maybe the venue is small that would not even accommodate 50 right. musicians. Right. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and uh, let's see, so the musicians, are you, are you all members of the union? Is that how? No one is. No one is. No. Okay, I wondered that because it adds a layer of complexity. I mean, yeah. nothing against unions, it's just a, a layer of complexity that many uh, right. organizations have to deal with. Yeah, I think eventually the goal would be when we graduate to be able to pay union wage and be a part of the union. But as students, it's kind of, it's a beneficial thing for everybody to be involved in. Sure, um, in sure. a way, and, and no one's really that concerned with the union piece because we're still students. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah you're right because it's different when you graduate with professional yeah. performers. Yeah, right, right. Right. So, um, well, actually, so um, in terms of, um, is, is it a, you, did you form a 5013C for South Exchange? Not yet. We actually have a fiscal sponsor. Ah. Um, and, and when we originally started, we weren't sure we wanted to be a nonprofit right away. I think that's the traditional road most arts organizations go down and okay. we kind of wanted to experiment for a year and see well is there an alternative model that we could use that might be more sustainable because I think financial sustainability like I said is always the challenge um, but I think the more the farther along we've gone there's no way you can build a group without donations and having that tax deductible benefit, um, y you need the 501c3. So we currently have a fiscal sponsor and we'll look towards applying for that um, status. So fiscal sponsorship for our viewers is a non-for-profit that you run your business through? or Yeah, okay. basically um, a, you partner with a different nonprofit in the community or they have um, organizations like Fractured Atlas that provide the 501c3 status for you and so when you apply for grants you actually use their status I and see. they might take a small portion sure. of the grant. For the convenience of all that which was I thought was really neat when yeah. I was looking at your website yeah. to say to see that, that you were able to do that which I right. think is brilliant. Yeah because yeah, there's a lot of money involved in setting a 5013c yeah. organization and time and yeah. And if you just kind of do it, it's like in a lot of ways, the, the sooner you do it, the better it is to see the results. Yeah. And then it gives you backing, to financial backing to do what you need to right. do. That's great. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Um, my guest is Emily Wozniak, and she is the founder and executive um, director right, mm -hmm. of Sound Exchange. And we'll be right back. Things can come and go quickly these days, but one thing has been sure and steady, and if you haven't noticed, it's been on the air for over 10 years now. Nanette Nokin has been a Rochester Public Access television fixture. With her highly accredited financial background, viewers are sure to learn some tips of the trade. Her show, It's About Money, has been educating, informing, entertaining, and inspiring viewers since 1996. She and her guests have been giving valuable advice on how to invest, spend, and save your hard-earned money and who is not interested in money. So tune into your public access station for a new monthly episode of It's About Money for Rochester's finest in finance. And we're back. I'm Nanette Nokan. It's about money. My guest is Emily Wozniak, and she found, she's the founder of Sound Exchange and the executive director. So thank you again for being here. Sure, thank you. So um, when we look at um, the... Origination. I know it's only been a couple of years of Sound Exchange. As you look back, would there have been different things you would have done to uh, tell us about that? I yeah, know. sure. Um, I think we launched Sound Exchange with, with a lot of great and big ideas. And um, we kind of had a mission before we actually had a solid group and um, concerts lined up. And I think if I were to go back, um, I would maybe first solidify a core group of musicians, a team that really was committed to sticking with the group all the way through the process of building it. Um, it's hard to start from square one with a group that's ready to build something from scratch. Um, that and also 
um, having a clear plan of, of how and when to schedule concerts because Eastman students are so busy. Um, it, it kind of started, felt like we were kind of, it was trial by error um, mm -hmm. at the beginning, but I'm, I'm not sure you can avoid that sure. with starting something new. Yeah, actually, I'm with you. know, I attended a graduation ceremony at the Eastman School of Music one year, and uh, the keynote speaker said, I wish you all failure. I yeah. thought, wow. And I, it really is amazing because, I mean, you look back, you would make these changes, but it's better to, to uh, quote, unquote, I don't, I don't think you failed, but it's better to have had that challenge and reflect on it and say, what can I use from here? Yeah, I, I totally agree. And with what we're doing, every concert is almost in a new venue or a new collaboration. We're constantly doing new things. And so there's no way for it to go perfectly all the time. And so it took me a while as one of the leaders in the group to be OK with that. Because as classical musicians, we're used to showing up mostly to the same concert hall, sitting in our chair, playing the same way most of the time. And sound exchange does not play in one concert hall. So we have these new variables all the time. And so for me personally, I've had to learn to become very flexible and kind of accept that I can't control every environment we're in. But the good thing about that is it adds an element of adventure mm -hmm. to what we do, which is exciting. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And plus, I think it, it gives uh, an experience of resiliency among the musicians, right? Yeah. Because at the end, it's just really, there are so many positions in uh, a musical orchestra, in an orchestra, that yeah. it's hard to have everybody be having a job like that. You have to yeah. be flexible. Yeah, exactly. And I think a great example, our first concert, we actually had audience seating in the orchestra. Ooh. So some of the audience members could choose to sit in the bassoon section or violin section. And the idea behind that was we wanted to expose the audience to the chemistry and energy that happens for the musicians in the orchestra. But for the musicians, we're not used to having strangers <laughs> in the orchestra. So a lot of the musicians were kind of thrown back at first. But then after a while, they saw that they could actually see the audience's response to the music right in front of them. And that was a very cool experience. It's great, because from what I understand, some of the uh, local groups and some other uh, orchestras do invite some of their patrons to sit in from time to time during rehearsals. Oh, so yeah. it's a nice exchange, and that's beautiful mm -hmm. that you did that. That's really yeah. neat. Yeah, it's That's fun. great. Now, uh, are you also in, um, are you putting some of your own music together, or is it? Yeah. OK. Um, so some of our artistic directors, actually all three of them, compose. And we've played all of their music. Uh, one, Matthew Cox, loves to write arrangements of popular music. Um, and so we've had an orchestra slash band come together with traditional classical music instruments, and then maybe adding um, a drum set, an electric guitar, and kind of fuse different genres. Another artistic director um, is writing a piece that we're playing this weekend that actually uh, brings in an element of audience participation. So the audience actually has a script, and they add different sounds to the base of the music. Oh, um, nice. So a lot of the people on our team like to write music, and, and that's part of our mission is to support the ideas of everybody in our group. Oh, how nice. That's yeah. brilliant. So it's not just performance, it's uh, um, composing. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So how do how does sound exchange replenish itself? I mean, you, you'll, uh, you'll be graduating. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you take on this responsibility or pass on the baton? Or how do you? Yeah, that's a great question. I think our leadership team right now is trying to decide whether we can all commit to staying in Rochester a little bit longer to build the group. Um, and so we're trying to figure that out. I'm definitely committed to making sure it stays alive. And I think right now we have a lot of partnerships that are very attached to Rochester. We have a partnership with Strong Memorial Hospital. Um, and, and we've formed a lot of relationships in the community that matter a lot to us. So we all have agreed that we think it belongs in Rochester. Um, but luckily at Eastman, you do have a lot of great musicians. And we have some younger members that would be able to take on leadership roles. So I think ultimately, we, we hope it stays here for a while. That's great. So tell me about the collaboration with the Strong Memorial Hospital. Mm -hmm. How it is? I mean, I can sort of picture that, but tell us about it. Yeah. So um, we had a meeting with the people at Strong Memorial Hospital. And Sound Exchange is all about kind of changing the experience surrounding classical music. And Strong Memorial Hospital wants to enhance the patient's experience in the hospital. So it was kind of a perfect marriage there. We decided instead of presenting a big concert in their atrium or one of their more public spaces that we wanted to go directly to the patient units. So we actually send one or two or four musicians into different units of the hospital twice a month. So 
one time we might be on, on a cancer floor, one time we might be in a cardiac unit, and patients are either wheeled out on their units or um, the musicians travel around the little circle. And uh, it's been such a rewarding experience because it's, it's different because we don't have a huge audience. We might have five people, but these people have never had live music come to them in a hospital when they're in a hospital bed. And it's, it's been so amazing to see what a difference it makes in their day to have something live and fresh sure. come, come into the hospital. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends was unfortunately hospitalized in Florida, but he said that it was uh, an interesting experience in that there was a, a piano in the, on the floor, mm -hmm. and the, so there was always a live musician, a play, a musician playing the piano, and he said that that was just a soothing uh, a part of the healing experience, right. you know what I mean? So it's it's great. What a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. What a brilliant idea. It's, instead of making it complicated to get them to see the, the program, that you would just bring it to, to the, the hospital right. setting. Very nice. These yeah. are really cool things. Yeah. You know, uh, so I've used sound exchange for my office party, which I think is yep. wonderful. And, and I've had a couple of art exhibits that you guys have come in. And I think that just kind of brings in an extra... Um, beauty or, or um, pleasantness to the the, the the reception and just it's just wonderful yeah, yeah I, I, I think it's great I love music and it's just nice that uh, that there's so many talented people in our community and the students so that's really great yeah. so now this sound exchange also travel outside of Rochester to, to perform we haven't yet but we're actually working on that right now our fringe festival concert in the planetarium mm -hmm. went really really well and so we're actually going to start contacting other planetariums, maybe in Buffalo, Syracuse, and surrounding areas, and seeing if that's a show that we could take to oh. other areas. But, but that is our goal. Um, you constantly want to create new programs, but you also want to get mileage out of some of them because you put so much time into creating these programs. So that's the direction we're going. So we're hoping that that was the world premiere and then you yep. could take it on to different sites. Yeah. Very nice. I love yeah. that because you're right. You've put in a lot of resources. You might as well do a repeat yeah. and uh, see what the difference is in the audience response. Right. Yeah. Very nice. That's yeah. great. That, that's a nice, uh, a nice venue or a nice um, festival, the Fringe Festival to be yeah. a part of. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. I, th I think it really highlights all of the talent in Rochester. It's, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, uh, no, if, if I understand it right, at the Eastman School of Music, you could study performance or education, right? Or you or can do both. Oh, you can do both. Can do, okay. Yeah, you can do double degrees or single degrees. You can make a degree program with something at Eastman, U of R. It's very flexible. I see. That's yeah. nice. That's nice. And, and you are a graduate student mm -hmm. right now. And what yeah. is your... Uh, what are you studying? Yeah, so um, I play horn, so an element of my degree is performing, but my overall degree is music education, and I'm getting um, a certificate in arts leadership. I see, very nice. And then part of that is you, do you go out to the different schools to teach? How do you get your experience in, in mm -hmm. education? Yeah, I actually, before I started my master's, I had two years of teaching experience. I lived in Houston and taught um, in about eight different school districts. I so, see. Um, but for undergrads, before they get that experience, part of their degree is student teaching. I see. Um, for your master's degree, you're required to do a certain teaching internship. I see. Oh, okay. So, yeah. And that's in a local school? Or? It can be in a local school, or I'm a TA for a couple classes at Eastman, so I'm actually teaching French horn to other music majors who might play violin or bassoon or oh, something I see. like that. Oh, cool. The French yeah. horn is quite, kind of an amazing instrument yeah. there. I won, the first concert, I saw somebody clean their French horn at a concert. I thought they were playing. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like, what are they doing? <laughs> Around yeah, right, right, right. It. Yeah. Like they're still performing. Right. What is going on? <laughs> I just never seen that before. You know, I happened to be sitting at a higher level than so I could see what was is usually at the back and you don't see that yeah. from the orchestra. And yeah. I thought, oh that that's pretty interesting. Uh -huh. But of course you'd have to do that yep. during a concert. Yep. Yeah, that's great. So how how young were you when you started playing the French horn? I was in sixth grade, so I was about eleven. Oh nice. Yeah. That's great. That's yeah. it seems like you're really dedicated and, and love your music. Yeah. So um, so, what other things um, w would you like to see happen with Sound Exchange as you move forward? Yeah, I think, gosh, it's it's so exciting because 
our mission is really to be open to trying anything. So um, I see us kind of having not different series, but building kind of different branches of what we do. So we're starting to get into contemporary music, um, but I still um, want to be true and remain dedicated to um, addressing orchestra orchestral problems, I guess. And so we've talked about maybe having a project centered around a conductorless orchestra. Um, and, and then we're building our chamber music program and I think continually, continuing to highlight um, compositions of people in our group. Um, but, but really, it's just an endless exploration sure, in lot, a way. A lot of different options there. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, I'm just really excited about what you've done and what you're still doing. And so if uh, any of our audience members want to uh, reach out to the members of Sound Exchange yeah. through a gig, they could uh, tell us how they get there. How yeah, they, they can you. go straight to our website, which is www.soundexchangeproject.com. Um, and our contact information is, is right on the website. So, and then um, the, the members of Sound Exchange perform at different venues, right? Different yep. events, birthdays, Anywhere. and whatever it might be. School, classroom, and that yep. kind of thing. Yep. I think that's brilliant. Well, best wishes to you and the Thank students uh, of, uh, participating in Sound Exchange. And uh, hopefully it continues on with um, you know, so many different projects. And uh, I like that idea of um, having a, an orchestra like Orpheus, right? Orpheus mm -hmm, is like the Orpheus, yeah. world famous uh, orchestra without a condu conductorless. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm not familiar with that term, but anyway, uh -huh. but that's fantastic. So, um, and so I thank you very much for taking thank the you. time to talk with me and to our mm -hmm. audience about uh, what you guys do. Yeah, thank you. So, and thank you very much, our audience, for being a part of our segment uh, with Emily Wozniak, um, the founder and executive director of Sound Exchange. Check them out at their website. And uh, until next time, I'm Nanette Nokon. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you have any questions for It's About Money, please email Nanette at nnocon at aol.com. This program was produced through Penfield Community Television in Penfield, New York.